welcome to our first Sunday service uh, for the month of May. Y'all believe it's May already? It's, this year is flying by. We do miss seeing you in person, but we are glad that you have tuned in in whatever mode you're watching us, be it on social media or if you're listening to us on our, on our conference call line um, or if you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, uh, etc. So again, thank you so much for giving God part of your day. Uh, he deserves it all, so whatever time we give him is not adequate, but we are thankful that you are willing to worship with us this morning. I do have just a few announcements, and then we're going to listen to a song uh, this morning. But my first announcement um, is that un we lost a young brother who's a member of our church this week. Eric Templeton Jr. passed away um, late Friday night, and uh, he's a young man, and we are asking that you would keep his family in prayer. Uh, and as we know more about um, any type of memorial or service, we definitely will spread the information as we normally communicate to our membership. Also, Brother Terry Welch had surgery this week, and uh, everything was, was successful. So please pray for him as he is recovering. Um, amen. Also, if you are a small business owner here in Dallas, the city of Dallas has made available some funds to assist in this pandemic outbreak that we're facing. So what we need uh, you to do is we need for you to go to the city of Dallas's website at 8 a.m. Um, Monday morning. Um, this is when it opens up for, to apply for funding to help your small business. We want to definitely make sure that our membership and our fellowship knew about this. Uh, we will definitely be sending out um, more information via social media, via our email, uh, but we want to, again, make sure that you are aware that the city of Dallas is doing what it can under the leadership of uh, our Mayor Eric Johnson and of our own council member Thomas. They're doing a wonderful job to help uh, address the issues that businesses may be facing due to this um, corona uh, virus outbreak that we're experiencing. So with that being said, um, we, are, we have a song here that um, happens to be, um, this song happens to be one of uh, Pastor Parrish's favorite songs. Um, and so um, I just woke up with this song um, on my spirit this morning, I think it fits right in line with our sermon. We're going to finish out our Surviving Your Personal Pandemic series. We're on part three today, and part three uh, is the three P's. So, Surviving Your Personal Pandemic, uh, remember the three P's. And those three P's are uh, perspective, prayer, and praise. And so we'll get into that in a few moments. But right now, I want you to enjoy this song um, by Bishop Paul Martin Sr., and it's called Your Best Days. You may think that it's over, that your life is done. Yeah. 
time like this, it reminds us of how wonderful our God is, how vast and how strong and how omnipresent he is, even as we're facing a virus that uh, is still taking the lives of 2,000 people a day worldwide. We can still pause and give thanks and pay homage to this great God that we serve as we are all having to deal with this. This, this thing this coronavirus is unifying in, in the aspect that we all are in this thing together. Even if you don't realize that you're in it with me, you are in it with me, whether you want to be or not. It has no respect of a person, does not care about um, who we are or what your title is or, or what, what your economic status is. It just, it just does not care. So again, uh, we thank you for tuning in with us. For those who want to um, go ahead and kind of flip ahead. We're going to look at three separate scriptures uh, today. The first one is going to be Isaiah 40 and, 20, 40 and 28. The second one is James 5 and 16. And the last one is Psalms 150 and 6. And if you don't have your Bible handy, I will read the scriptures anyway so you can just kind of stay with us. Um, but the three P's. So as we are closing out our uh, learning how to shelter in place, uh, was our first was our first lesson, and, and then last week we, we we dealt with knowing who to run to. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in a time of trouble. In Psalms forty six, and this week we are going to close it out, looking at three separate pa uh, uh, passages, and um, God gave it to us in a way that's easy to remember. So just remember the three P's. That's our title for today: the three P's. And the first one is perspective. As you are dealing with a personal pandemic, and, and, and I'm not trying to, to um, uh, copyright and cringe on my brother in the ministry, Jesse Jackson, with, with the rhyming, so it's not my normal style. This is just kind of the way it came to me today. 
Uh, but as you are dealing with your personal pandemic, understand that you've got to keep the right perspective. You know, there, there, there's a scripture and, and there's a song that we sing. We grew up singing a lot. He'll keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him, right? Well, there's another scripture I want us to, to, to look at uh, here in Isaiah 40 and 28. And it says, and this is very familiar. You, you, you know the scripture. It says, have you not known? Have you not heard uh, the God, <clears throat> the, the Lord, the everlasting God, the creator uh, to the ends of the earth, he does not faint or grow weary. Uh, his understanding is unsearchable. Listen, no matter what you are personally facing as you are dealing with a trial or a trying period in your life, have you not known, have you not heard about this amazing God that you serve, this vast God that you serve. And he is asking you, matter of fact, he's compelling you simply by his presence to make sure you keep the proper perspective. Understand that when you think your problem is too big for you, it ain't even, don't even register on God's Richter scale. It's almost like looking in the rearview mirror. You know, we got these mirrors that have the magnification on it, so they have to put a uh, notice on that, that warning, objects may be closer than what they appear, right? Because your perspective as you're looking at stuff behind you is different. And sometimes when we are looking at our problems and we're looking at our God, our perspective is skewed because God is invisible to the naked eye, but our problems are oftentimes with us when we wake up. And if you're like me, sometimes they're with you even when you're dreaming. You can't seem to get away from them. But he's saying, don't let the fact that the, this object may be closer to you than, 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 than what you see, don't let that uh, get in your mind and make you think that I'm not bigger than your problem and that I'm not closer to you than what your problem is. Even if you're dealing with a sickness, God is saying, guess what? I have taken up residence in your soul, you New Testament believer, so I'm dealing with this thing internally with you. I'm dealing with your heart. I'm dealing with your lungs. I'm dealing with your kidneys and your liver. I'm dealing with all of this stuff with you. None of this stuff catches me off guard because God is saying I don't faint and I don't grow weary. Keep the right perspective. As you are dealing with challenges in your life, the minute your perspective gets skewed, you will find yourself in a bad situation. I, 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 can, I can borrow this, this testimony from Peter who wanted to walk on water. Y'all remember that. Peter is a lot like a lot of us. I, I, I find myself identifying a lot with Peter because Peter was very rambunctious. Peter was very outgoing, but Peter also had some personal flaws that, that, that caused him to doubt, and it caused him to deny Christ. We, we, we know the story. We beat Peter up a lot, but Peter was willing to walk on water once he saw Jesus walking on the water. He said, he said, Master, bid me that I come out here with you, and, and Jesus said, come on. And as long as Peter's perspective was focused on Jesus and on his Savior, he could do the impossible, but the minute he recognized where he was, humanly speaking, and he saw what he saw, and he took his eyes off of the Messiah, and he focused on the water that was not supposed to hold his body weight because we're just not built like that, humanly speaking, right? So the minute he allowed his humanity to override his spirituality, then his perspective was skewed, and he began to do what? Sink. And I promise you, some of us are sinking right now because we let our perspective change. We take our view off of the great I am and we focus on stuff that we think is supposed to do a certain thing. We focus on our jobs because we rely on our jobs to feed ourselves, to feed our lifestyle, to pay for vacations, pay for our kids' education, to do this and to do that. When really you need to focus on the true job, what? creator himself. And it's not the government. It's not a political party. It's not even stocks and bonds. It's, it's not a board of governors. It is God himself who allows you to give you your what? Daily bread. But when you remove your focus from the great I am and on what he does and you begin to look at this man-made earthly things or even the things that God has given us to use to exist. God gave us water. 
Peter was not supposed to be able to walk on water, but he, but he did as long as his perspective was on the one who created the water. See, there's nothing that I can experience in this life that God does not know how to deal with because guess what? He made it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was what? With God. The same that was now is was there in the beginning. That's, that, that's John 1 and 1. And so that's, that, that tells me that there's nothing I can face in this world that I can, that, that if, as long as I keep my mind and my eyes and my spiritual eye focused on him, I can walk on water. I can do the impossible. I can keep my mental state elevated even in the time where I'm locked in my home. I can keep I can keep my family's finances, I can manage my family's finances even when I don't know if my job will be there for me whenever we get out of this. Why? Because my perspective is not on the things that are governed by humanity. My perspective is governed by God. I wouldn't even plan on getting into this this morning, but I feel the Spirit lead me in this direction. So let's just analyze this walking on water just a little bit more. And if I misquote something, forgive me, I'm just doing it from memory. But, but what I do know is they were fishermen, and so they were used to having a boat float on water. Think about this. Think about, how, think about this. Think about this. We, as human beings, we know airplanes fly. But how many of us think that we can walk out and flap our wings and fly, right? Think about it. That's the same concept for the disciples. They knew they could build a boat. They could do what? They could float. And they could stand in that boat and they could float. But they did not have enough faith, even watching the Messiah walk on water, that they could join him and walk on water with him. Man. But I, 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 just, I, I just hope that some of us who are listening and watching this broadcast are, are, are faithful enough in our uh, relationship with him that when we see God doing the impossible, we're willing to jump out of the boat and not just put our toe in, because that's probably what I would have done, to be honest with you. I would have probably, you know, looked around, found me a rock or something, threw it out there, and then put my toe in, you know, and then, you know, kind of eased out there, right? I, I, I want to have that faith where I can just, as soon as I see that I see the Messiah doing it, and he tell, if he tells me, come on, man, I want you to join me, that I jump out of the boat with complete faith, knowing that if he is there, that everything I need to be okay is what? Is there with him as well. So we got to have the right perspective as we find ourselves dealing with what we're dealing with. You did not do anything to cause this pandemic. You didn't, you as an individual, you did nothing to cause this to happen to you. Don't let fear, doubt, all these things creep into your mentality. You, you keep worshiping and praising God. When you find yourself getting down, you, you, you stop right there and just say, this is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in you. That's not just for Sunday morning. That's not just for Saturday. That's a, that, that is for whenever you want to give the great I am his just due. And whenever you need to snap yourself back into focus. Let me move on. Let me move on. Let me move on. But perspective. I want you to have a really good perspective. And, and our scripture for that is Isaiah 40 and 28. Our next scripture is prayer. And I didn't want to just do, the, that's our second P. And I didn't want to just do the B side of that of, 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 of the scripture because I think the reason why James recorded this as one concurrent thought is he's trying to give us insight on how God views things, okay? So let me read James 5 and 16. It says, confess your trespasses one to another. I'm reading from the New King James. Confess your trespasses one to another and, um, and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of the righteous man availed much. What is interesting to me, as I was researching for the sermon and preparing myself, and, and I quote the B side of this scripture all the time. I say it probably, those who are used to worshiping us are true, that you probably hear me say this at least once a Sunday, if not at least twice a, you know, twice a month. I, this is one of my favorite things to keep myself motivated, keep myself in line. I've got to have an active and a fervent prayer life. But, when by, but by dismissing the A part of the scripture, I think we lose sight of what God is really telling us. 
First, it starts off, James starts off uh, telling us to confess our trespasses one to another. So if I have done something to hurt my brother my sister, and they have done something to hurt me, we've got to get that cleared up. And we got to pray for one another that we may be what? Healed. I submit to you that before we pray, and, and this is also recorded in Matthew as well, but before we pray, if we got some beef between us and a family member, us and a neighbor, us and a friend, God wants us to get that straight as much as we can before we even talk to him because he values how we treat each other. And I think, I think somewhere, I, I did a sermon series a couple years ago called The Selfish Christianity, and I think somewhere along the line, we have gotten into this selfishness and only thinking about ourselves when we think about God and what he can do and what we need him to do and God bless me and God bless my family and God bless my, my, I, 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 me, me, me. God bless me, bless me, bless me. I need this, I need this. And God is saying, I'm watching how you treat each other and maybe I'm going to bless you according to how you treat somebody else. We say it in, we say it in the model prayer all the time when Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray. It says, forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. So the same measuring stick, God, that I use to extend uh, uh, forgiveness to my kids, I, you use that same measure on me, my goodness. I tell, mar I tell married couples or engaged couples who have premarital counseling, we have our sessions, I tell them, listen, your capacity to love somebody is only going to be equal to your capacity to forgive them. If you can't forgive them as much as you love them, then save yourself the lawyer fees and, and don't get married. Because marriage, amen, and, I, and all the people who are married or who have been married, all who, who are watching this broadcast, you ain't got to unmute yourself and say amen. Just wave your hand where you are. Because you got to be able to forgive somebody when you marry. Oftentimes, you have to forgive yourself for how you're conducting yourself in your marriage, right? But you gotta, you got to be able to be loving and you got to be able to be forgiving. you got to be able to, you got to be able to forgive one another. God is saying, listen, you want to be blessed, be a blessing to somebody else. Yeah, God don't want us to be a spiritual river. He wants us to be a spiritual, a spiritual conduit. He wants us, he wants to, that's when he can promise, yeah, we can, we can pay our tithes and offering and thank you so much for being consistent in paying your tithes and your offering. But, but he wants, as he pours out a blessing that there may not be room enough to receive it, that's not just for you just to, just to hoard it and build a bigger barn. That's not what he wants, no. That's not going to be room enough for you, for you to receive it so that you can push that abundance out to somebody else. It's the same concept with prayer. If I got, if somebody got a problem with me and I know it, then all I can do is go to them and offer with humility and say, you know what, whatever's happened between us, I'm sorry, and please forgive me. This can't be on my conscience anymore. Yeah, and that takes some humility. So maybe, maybe during this time, we got a lot of downtime. We got a lot of time to think and process. Maybe some of those old sores, maybe some of those old scabs that we kind of pick at spiritually. Maybe it's time for us to really deal with some of this stuff while we have time. Because once we get back to whatever our normal is, we have a lot of excuses and a lot of reasons, a lot of hustle and bustle as to why we can't or why we shouldn't or this or that. Maximize your time. Get it right with whoever you need to get it right with. Okay? Then it goes to the B side of the scripture. The effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Man, how is prayer effective? And then how is it fervent? You know, I, I, I've, I've learned this. I've learned this. And the Bible says it. You don't have to pray long for your prayer to be effective. You just got to be willing to be transparent before God. Think about, I'm talking to the mature Christians right now. Think about how you used to pray when you were first really trying to, I mean, when you first were really trying to live right, right? You had to do all this warm up. Uh, dear God, it's me. I don't know if you're listening. You know, all that kind of stuff, right? But then once you got to the point to where you were, you were spending time with him consistently and you were, you were rolling with him consistently, and, and before you knew it, it, every time you got in your car, you were praying. You, 
you, you find yourself driving to work, not even listening to your radio. You cut your radio off and you just spend that time praying or wherever you spend your time talking to God, right? And, 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 and you remember how that changed, right? Well, it's in those moments that your prayer don't have to be long. It doesn't have to have all these, these um, great pontification points uh, in it. It doesn't have to have all these great uh, illusions and alliterations. Why? Because not a hair falls from your head that he doesn't already know about. So you're not informing God about anything. If anything, you're asking him for his direction and you're asking for his help. So, so, the, so to make your prayer effective, what I want us to do is to learn how to be brutally honest with God. Now, I know that may sound crazy. That may sound second nature. Well, of course I'm honest with God. Well, evaluate how you pray. Do you tell God what you really think or do you tell God what you think he wants to hear? Do you say, God, listen, listen. Okay, I, you know, for, 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 for those who don't know, I've been trying to, and I've been doing so good, by the way, of staying away from that gold rim cookies and cream, uh, uh, bluebell ice cream. For those who don't have a blessing of bluebell in your life because you don't live in the South and you're not from Texas and you're watching this, let me tell you something. And, and listen, homemade ice cream, what a perfect way to say, have yourself some bluebell, uh, country ice cream today. I, I don't even know the jingle. I, me and Bluebell have loved each other for a very long time. Amen. But I decided about a couple years ago that maybe I shouldn't love Bluebell as consistently as I love Bluebell. Right? I need to love Bluebell on occasion. I don't need to love Bluebell daily and or multiple times during the day. It's just not beneficial. All things are permissible, but everything is not beneficial. Am I, am, am I right about it? And so I had to learn, and, and I know I'm using something as silly as ice cream, but I'm making a larger point here. I hope you can understand this. I had to learn when I wanted to get Bluebell on my lunch break, and I had to learn that that ain't the right thing. So I had to say, had to say, had to learn to have a conversation with God in that moment, say, God, you know what? I really want some Bluebell right now, but I'm be okay with these carrot sticks and ranch. That may sound silly, that may sound crazy, but it helps in my understanding of who God is, and, and it definitely helps him be able to bless me more when I'm completely honest, as opposed to saying, God, I got a temptation that I need you to help me with. Hey, listen, God knows you better than that. You don't have to talk in code when you're talking to God. You need to talk directly to him. God, this is what I'm dealing with. I know you know it because you are in my soul. You're in my body dealing with this too. This is what you told me to do. I need your help. And then you could be like the real singers, singer saints who've been with him a long time. They don't even have to say that. They just say, Lord, help. And he already knows. But learn how to be honest in your prayer life. Learn how to be completely honest about what you're dealing with and what you're going through. Be honest with God. Brutally honest with him. Have some fervency about your prayer. You, I, I'm, I'm an emotional speaker. I, I get loud. I change my cadence. Now I don't. I, 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 I don't. I don't close my sermon out the way that typically uh, black preachers do. That's just not. I, that's just not me. I, I can fake it, but that's just not. That's just not who I am. But I do get excited. I do elevate. My heart starts beating fast. I normally I'm moving around a lot more, and, and I, I do all those things, right? But that's not what. The, that's not the fervor he's talking about here. The fervor he's talking about is having some intentionality. To your prayer, have having some having some intentionality to your prayer. You know when you are really when you are really into something, you, th th there's some fervor behind it. I love sports, and, and you know, I, I love sports, love it. I have loved sports a very long time. One of my first loves was sports, love it. And when I'm watching a sporting event, and if I'm into it, there's some fervor. I don't want a whole lot of moving around me when I'm trying to concentrate. Don't ask me. Don't ask me to pass to pass you a bottle of water if if if, if, if LeBron got the ball and he's about to do something with this basketball. I need to see what's going on. That same fervor I have for this stuff that really don't matter. I need to have that exact same intensity when I'm talking to God. I need to be intentional. I don't need to be distracted. See, I didn't understand. I'm trying to unpack for you these sayings that we have in the church about going to your prayer closet or learn how to spend time with God. Like we say all these things, a lot of books written about them, and, and folks don't, still don't understand what people mean when they say that. Let me unpack it for you. 
Find somewhere you can go where you won't be distracted and spend some time being brutally honest with some intentionality, talking to God, having an open dialogue with God about whatever it is you're going through or just because you just had a great day and you want to share it with them. Because just like as a parent, you want your kids to interact with you when they're having a great day and you want them to interact with you when they don't feel so well. You just want to do what? Be in their presence. You just want to know that they still value you. You just want to know that they still feel your love. So have that same fervent spirit about you. Have that same intentional spirit about you. Have that same desire to, to want to be in his presence. And last thing, when you pray, sometimes when you pray, and we call this meditation, and, and I don't want to get you too confused by what other religions do and this and that and new age thought and all that. So let me just say this. Sometimes when you pray, you may open up the prayer, but sometimes you're just sitting there and just waiting for him to respond. Or sometimes you're just sitting in silence and allowing your mind to just regurgitate on things he's already told you. But learn how to be honest, learn how to be intentional, and have some fervency in your prayer. And that's what the old folk mean when they say get to your prayer closet. That's what, that's what these authors mean when they tell you that you need to spend time with God. You need to, you need, because this stuff sounds like cold. It sounds like, how do I spend time with an invisible God that I can't see? I got to understand that. You spend time with him through your prayer life. When you're praying and you're asking him and you're talking to him. Because remember, we're trying to survive a personal pandemic. So we've got to have a good perspective. Then we got to utilize prayer, which in my opinion is the most underutilized thing. Because prayer helps me re be reminded of who he is during the middle of my pandemic. Prayer helps me stay, stay focused on the fact that God is God. And God is God and he's infinite and I am finite. So because he is the great I am, th then he can handle whatever it is I'm dealing with. Prayer is my mind regulator. Prayer is the thing that keeps my blood pressure under control. Prayer is the thing that helps me focus the way I need to focus. It's prayer. Prayer is, prayer is a stress believer for the believer, and we don't use it enough. You, can, there's, you cannot pray enough. There's not enough words you can say. Even if you don't pray it out loud and you're just praying within yourself, there's not enough words and not enough time you can ever spend with God. So make sure you spend that time praying. Our last point is praise. Our last point is praise. Praise. Psalms 150 and 6 says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Even as we are stuck in our homes, listen, you have done every home improvement project that you know to do. You have helped your kids. Your kids are now reading six grade levels above where they're supposed to. <laughs> You know, you've done everything that you know to do. You have caught up on your Netflix uh, 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 list, right? You remember how you had that list of, 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 of stuff that you want to watch or recommendations? You done, you done burned through that whole thing. You, done, you, saw, you have seen every season and every episode of a show that you just, you, you've been dying to watch that you never had a chance to watch. You, we, we've done all this stuff, right? And some of us still find ourselves with spiritually with our head hung down and we still find ourselves looking at our problem instead of looking at the problem solver. And I submit to you, the last thing that we need to do is to praise our way through it. Yeah. J. Moss uh, has a song that starts off, there's a praise on the inside that I can't keep to myself. You know, a hallelujah staring up from the depth of my soul. So excuse me if I seem a little um, I, I seem a little strange because praise is the way I say thanks. You know, and, and, and you you got to be willing to just give God some unadulterated praise. And however you do it, you, the way you praise ain't the way I praise. I, I, I can't judge your praise. You, you, you are not praising me. You are not singing these arms and these hymns to me. You're not, as old folks say, storming up timber to me. You're doing that for God. So I can't tell you whether or not your praise is good enough or not. But yes, it's two people in that situation who do know. It's you and it's God. Because if you've been proper perspective and if you've been having an honest 
prayer communication with God, when you are praising that stuff that comes to the front of your mind, that's the time that you can do what? Let it go. And you can really give it to him. I'm trying to unpack some of this spiritual um, um, minutia and these cliches that we say all the time. I'm trying to help you. So if you praise, if you are praising him and you are praising God and you are thanking him for what he's already done, you're thanking him for what you see him doing and for the, for the, for the really um, a steadfast believer, you're praising him in advance for what he's told you he's already going to do. Faith is a substance of things hoped for when there's the evidence of things not seen. So even when it don't look like it's going to happen, the fact he's already told you it's going to happen is reason enough for you to praise God anyway. You've got to get to a point to where you can praise no matter what is going on in your life. When you go to a doctor and you hear some stuff that you did not want to hear, you can praise them right there. When you are dealing, in, dealing with your family and things are not the way that you want them to be, you can praise him right then. When you just wake up and you realize, man, I still can't get out of the house like I want to, you can praise him right there. No matter what, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Praise him. Praise him. That You don't have to be, you know what, maybe God is showing us, and I know it's about time for me to bring this to a close, but maybe God is showing us that since we can't congregate and we can't have our favorite musician and our favorite song and the choir can't sing our favorite song and our favorite song leader can't sing, that maybe God is trying to show us all over that, you know what, we have been so reliant and so reluctant to praise him and used to just join in on somebody else's praise that I'm going to fix it to where, guess what? You're going to have to praise me for your doggone self. You're going to have to praise me simply because I am God. You have got to learn how to praise me. And if you are embarrassed to praise me, then Matthew 7 says, if you are ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. Another pastor says, you know what? I don't need y'all to praise me. I'm paraphrasing. I don't need y'all to praise me. I can have these rocks cry out. I can have these rocks cry out because guess what? I made them. So they can sing of my goodness and my greatness. If, if, if you can't humble yourself enough to, uh, to understand that you need to praise me. Praise is not conditioned on what I'm going through right now. That's conditional praise. No, 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 no. Praise is something that, that, that we should be doing constantly and consistently. When I'm up, I praise him. When I'm down, I praise him. When I'm in between, I praise him. You have got to get to that point. And it's going to feel awkward at first. It's gonna, if you're not used to doing this, and, don't, and, and please don't let me fuss at you. Don't, I'm, I don't want to fuss at you. We, this is growing. All of us are growing. But if, if it feels awkward for you at first, it's okay. Find your favorite song. Find your favorite scripture. Get by yourself somewhere. Or join in with your family if you would like. Have whatever makes you feel comfortable. Because here's what I do know. Once you get used to doing it, it becomes habitual and it becomes contagious. You can't help but praise it. And the people around you, they'll either join in or they'll run away. And guess what? If they run away, you didn't need them there anyway. Because my praise ain't for anybody else. Listen, guys, thank y'all so much for tuning in with us and our broadcast. Thank you so much for um, being willing to deal with your personal pandemics. Uh, let me repeat um, for those who maybe joined the call later or who are watching who just tuned in and didn't get all three points. The first point was uh, that you got to have the right perspective, and that's in Isaiah 40 and 28. The second one uh, point was prayer, James 5 and 16, the entire verse. And the last point was praise. We've got to praise God, Psalms 150 and 6. That's about the word of prayer. And then um, I'll come back with a couple more a couple more announcements, and then we'll, we'll be finished for today. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that even in the middle of a pandemic, you are still present. And because of your presence, because you live, I can face tomorrow. Because... Because, Yahweh, you are such a good, protective presence in my life. I can, I can face and I can deal with whatever I need to face, whatever I need to deal with. Because you have work for us to do. And so because of that, God, I know that one day we're going to be out of this. One day this corona season, this COVID-19 season 
is going to be a memory, and we're going to have to tell our kids about it. They may not even remember about it, and it'll just feel like a small blip. What seems to be so large and looming large now, one day will just be a small blip as we get back to whatever normal looks like. Uh, but Father, we're, we're, I'm hopeful that we have taken this time to really deal with these issues that we have been facing with, that we have been uh, dealing with for a very long time. Some of us need to slow down enough to deal with some spiritual issues, maybe even some health issues, some physical issues that we have been ignoring, that we're getting right and getting it right with you right now. Father, you know about the loss of life that we've experienced in our congregation. You know about those who either are going to the hospital or who have been to the hospital. Uh, so, Father, we know that you are more than capable, you're more than able to touch everyone around the world, not just in America, but around the world who are dealing with COVID-19. Uh, Father, those who are dealing with the underlying health issues, and even those, Father, the young lady, uh, 17 years old here in, here in the Dallas area, uh, who had no underlying issue, and she lost her life uh, behind this illness, behind this sickness. Father, be with her family as they are trying to understand and put together the pieces um, about what happens to their loved ones. So, Father, help us use wisdom. Um, help us listen to the Holy Spirit. And when we want to go to the grocery store and you tell us not to, help us to sit right there in that house. And then, Father, it, it help us as to, again, uh, just understand exactly what it is that we need to do um, as we try our best to uh, be safe, um, to be wise, and to be ready to be used by you. Uh, it's in your son, Jesus' name, we ask it all. Amen. If you are a um, member of our church, or if you would like to give um, to the ministry here at Truly Missionary Baptist Church, we want to uh, let you know that there are several ways that you can give. You can go to our website, which is truly.org, T-R-U-E-L-E-E.org. -E -E uh, click on the Give Online and just kind of go through that one-time setup, and um, and you can you can you can give if you are here locally uh, and um, just want to get out the house, and, and we, we advise you to. Just come on up to the church and drop it in the mail slot. Please make sure you push the envelope all the way in the mail slot so we can ensure that it um, that it falls into the office that it needs to fall into. Or you can always put your uh, tithes and offering or a love offering in the mail um, and address it to um, Truly Missionary Baptist Church, 3907 Robert L. Parish, Senior Avenue, Dallas, Texas, 75210. So again, thank you guys so much uh, for tuning in to our uh, service today. You guys be blessed. Uh, don't forget, um, Bible study is starting back this week. For, so for those who have downloaded the app, thank you for downloading the app. Um, you, should, you, should, you should have received a notification via the app. Um, but Bible study is starting this week. Um, it's the same teleconference uh, software that we've been using. Uh, so it's the same uh, login number. 6.15 is going to start our prayer service. So from 6.15 to 6.30, we're going to have a devotional period uh, where we take prayer requests, sing a song, read a scripture, and pray. And then we will pick back up with our experience in God on, on six, at 6.30, from 6.30 to 7.30. Um, and we'll do that via our teleconference um, software. And so uh, thank you guys so much. I believe mission is meeting Monday. Uh, and I believe that the matron are in charge uh, this Monday, so I miss your sisters on your Zoom call. I, I, may, I may do a guest appearance on that Zoom call. I don't know. I may just pop in on there and see, see what y'all are doing in there. Um, but uh, we want to commend our mission sisters for, for, for getting started. And either, even more Bible studies are coming online. And so just be prepared and listen to, um, listen to the messages as well as the emails that we, we will be sending out. So until next Sunday, God bless you and may he keep you as our prayer.